Hey guys, what's going on? In today's video, we are heading offshore out of Key West to catch some giant Amber Jackson vertical jigs. Then I will meet you back home to make some smoked fish that we're gonna turn into some incredible fish dip and enjoy it with some ice cold copper tail beers. So I hope you enjoy the video. I'll meet you back in the kitchen. We moved spots again and we're anchored. And this is only my second drop on the vertical jig. And I'm hooked up to a big AJ. Look at this bend. Oh my god. You like that new rod? Oh yeah. I need to get to the other side of the boat, but I don't know if anything's happening. Loosen the drag or put in a free spool and just go over there. I've got a free spool, just keep it. It might not be hooked very well. Jim, get it, Jim. Double? Oh, you guys are tripled up on fish. This thing is big. Got him? That's your biggest one for sure. <laughs> That's definitely your biggest one. Yeah, baby. Here's the jig. Oh, Cody got mine. No regrets, bro? No. He was Don't not coming on glue, let me tell you. Give it up, give it up, give it up. All right, baby. See this thing. You ready? I'm ready. Are you ready? There we go. Come on, get him. You can do the sideways one. You can do it. Do it for like five seconds. Oh my god, look at my ring. <laughs> We're locked. We're in big trouble. I buy you this nice ring and look at what you do to it. The wedding's canceled. At least it's still, at least it's still <laughs> on my finger. <laughs> Chris, look at it. Meanwhile, 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 they're on the other rod. There. Time to see if I can lift them into the box. <laughs> <laughs> Amberjack catching cook coming your way. Well, we have muttons in here, black fins, a kingfish, mahi, triggerfish, and now a giant amberjack. I'd say that's a pretty good day. Another AJ in the boat. Good job. Thank you. That's a good fish. That's a big fish. It might be you bigger than mine, I think. Much. Looks bigger than mine, I think. Yours is pretty good. You did a great job with that fish. Thank you. Another big AJ. Another good one. All right, tight on the bottom, Ron. Nice fish, my brother. You got another one on? Yeah. Mutton, right? I one too, yeah, I believe so. Rick's biggest mutton? Oh no, you caught a big one last summer. Definitely gonna be a keeper. <laughs> oh no. You really yep. No. Oh no, no. No, real, 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 real. Maybe it let go. Aww. I've never been shark here. He's still fighting. He works. I'm saying never. I mean, the problem is there's so much current today that the, the smell is just going. You know, the odds of a shark fighting us are pretty good. Makes sense. Keep working on bro. He's just fighting. Just a big fish. I believe it's gonna be. Mutton. 
think so. What's the block? This will be the biggest freaking mutton I ever catch in my life. Maybe, I mean, it's not acting like a mutton now, <laughs> but that's not a shark. That's just a fish fighting. Keep working. Amberjack. I don't think it's an amberjack. It ran once and then it just quit. Who knows? Could be a, a sharp nose shark. I think it's a big AJ. Big AJ? I, think I, don't, I don't know about a big one, but it's acting like an AJ. A AJ. Alright, Enough of your shenanigans. We have ourselves a jack. It looks like. So much for it being a mutton. <laughs> Oh, Jack Ravel. Oh. That's a crappy one, Brooke. Oh. Did it just come off right there? Yeah. Are you serious? All that work for that? You got the video of it. What do you mean? It was a leader release. Oh. Yeah, I guess. It's not like we lost them. Proper release. Who are going to keep them? That's a big Jack Ravel, though. Yeah, that's Ate like a mutton. But was definitely not a mine. <laughs> I think they probably fight harder than Krabby's or than, than AJ's pound for pound. Oh, yeah. That start. thing was a quarter of the size of the AJ and it worked my ass almost as well as the AJ. Hey guys, welcome back to the kitchen. So last night I put my fish in a brine and I brined them for 15 hours. I split the fish into these two containers and I mixed up my brine. I used half a cup of brown sugar and stirred it well to let it dissolve in a bowl with eight cups of water. I added a quarter cup of salt, which I also stirred in to dissolve, and then some garlic powder. I made this bowl full twice, one for each of the containers. The important thing here is to make sure the fish is completely submerged in the brine. Alright, so here's a little tip if you guys don't have room in your fridge, put it in a cooler with ice and that's how you can brine it instead of using the fridge and this worked perfect. And so they've been in this brine for 15 hours now, and now I'm going to dry them off and then we're putting them on the smoker. What the brine does is it keeps it from drying out while you smoke it and it also seasons it. Now I have different sized pieces. Some of them are almost two inches thick. Some of them are a little bit thinner. So I'm gonna have to kind of keep an eye out on how they all cook, because they're not gonna all cook at the same amount of time. Like this piece is thinner, so that one's gonna not take as long is some of the more thicker pieces. For instance, this is a lot thicker than that last piece. Ideally, you want your pieces all to be around the same thickness, but obviously if you have a fish that has different size fillets on it, there's not much you can do about it. And here's one of those like more of two inch thick pieces, which is going to take a lot longer than the thinner pieces. Ooh, baby. All right guys, so this is Victor's Traeger Grill. I'm not sure exactly how long we're gonna smoke it for yet. We're gonna see how it goes. Victor likes to say low and slow. So we're gonna leave it on the smoke setting the entire time. But I'm going to set them on the grill kind of based on how thick they are. So here's a really thick piece. Take a look. Ooh, we're getting some good color. Oh yeah, that looks good. You see how the smaller pieces definitely are done? We could probably take those little pieces off. Do a little sample. Rip off a piece. Is it hot? Oh yeah, it's hot. Good? It's good. Does it need to cook more? That's all you give me? For being your cameraman, this is all I get? I need to find a new job. Here. Mm. Oh yeah, baby. Doing good. Mm. And it's still moist inside, it's not dried out. Okay, I'm gonna close it and let them go for longer. Hey 
guys, welcome back to the kitchen. So we had our Amber Jack fillets on the smoker for eight hours. They got beautiful color, and when you open them up, they're not dried out. They're still moist, but they're cooked all the way through, and we've been eating them just smoked by themselves, and they are absolutely delicious. Now comes the fun part of tearing them apart and making the fish dip. Now this is our first time ever smoking Amber Jack before. And we all kind of agreed that this was our favorite plain smoked fish that we've had. We've done kingfish before and we've done amberjack. And I have to say that I think amberjack is definitely better than the kingfish. Now you can keep it just like this and just eat it like a snack, which we've been doing, or you can also make it into the dip. And there's lots and lots of different ways to make dip. But for me, this is the ingredients that I'm gonna be using. I'm using celery, jalapeno, red pepper and then onion and then the lemon is to squeeze on the dip before you eat it kind of if you like doing that now there's tons of different ingredients that you can put into fish dip if you don't like peppers don't use peppers some people really like it hot and so they use a lot more jalapeno but there's lots of different ways to make it and also for the fish what i'm going to do is i'm going to kind of just tear it apart now you can put it into a food processor but that makes it very very fine we kind of like a more solid fish dip, I guess you could say. So really all I'm going to be doing is taking my fingers and pulling it apart. Now, if you were to put it into like a food processor, it's going to be a lot finer. And if that's what you like, then go ahead. But if you like it a little bit more thick, then you can take your hands and just kind of peel it apart. Look at that, it just comes right apart. Just kind of mushing it up. Just flakes right off. So this is gonna be a more textured fish dip rather than a creamy fish dip. Now when smoking fish, you can smoke them with the skin on and the bones still in, but we filleted our fish in the Keys and we didn't really know how we were gonna cook it yet, so we filleted it normally. And you can smoke it like that, that's fine too. If you do smoke it with the skin on, the skin just peels right off after you smoke it and that's easy, really easy to deal with. Either way works. I know a lot of you are probably gonna be like, why didn't you leave the skin on? But that's why, because we didn't know what we were gonna do. Like Victor did an amberjack recipe with his and he cooked it on the grill, which was really, really delicious. All right guys, so this is how we're looking on the consistency of our fish. And like I always say, your hands are your best tool in the kitchen. So any big pieces I'm kind of just breaking up with my hands, but that's what we got going on. Now we're gonna add all of our other ingredients. Now every time I make fish dip, I use a combination of mayonnaise, sour cream, and cream cheese. Now I don't go by any special amount of anything, I kind of just throw it in and as I go, I try it and decide what I want to add more of. Let's just go for it. The first thing I'm doing is mayonnaise. Now there's a lot of dry ingredients here, so we're gonna be using a lot of wet ingredients. Now I'm going to attempt to stir this with a spoon. I can already tell that I'm going to have to add a lot more wet ingredients. The cream cheese is definitely gonna be the hardest part to mix throughout. I cannot wait for this. We love smoked fish dip and we don't have it very often. Even though we catch kingfish a lot and we love smoked fish dip, it's just a very big process. And for a very long time, we never had a smoker. And so if we wanted a smoke fish, we always had to borrow people's smokers. If you guys don't have one, then find a friend with one because I definitely suggest giving smoke fish dip a try one time. And then just tell someone, hey, can I borrow your smoker? And then I'll give you a batch of fish dip afterwards. And I'm sure they'd be more than happy to let you borrow it. Now, it's still pretty thick. I'm gonna add some more wet ingredients to it before I add all of my vegetables. Adding some more mayonnaise to this. We want it more wet than it already is. Time to add the fun stuff. Now we have finely chopped red pepper, onion, celery, and then jalapeno. And I'm just gonna go for it and add all of it in. And that is half a red pepper and half an onion. Two of those small jalapenos that you guys saw earlier. And then about eight of those smaller celery sticks. It's getting good. I think you can quit now, Brooke. It's really good. It smells amazing. It smells nice and fresh. It looks amazing. 
It is. Look at all those colors. Yeah, it looks good. Mm -hmm. uh, Alright, so we got our nice fish dip with a little lemon that you can squeeze on top. And the best thing to eat with smoked fish dip would be a nice ice cold beer. Now for all you local Floridians, this is called Copper Tail and it's actually brewed in Tampa, Florida. This one's called Free Dive, this one's my favorite. Fisher and I think my mom, what are you, you guys' favorite is the Night Swim. It's the Porter. They like the Porter, the darker one. This one's an IPA, the Free Dive. But very good, nice ice cold beer and some smoked fish dip. What do you guys think? Thank you. Cheers. 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 When you, when you catch a big AJ, you get more than one meal out of it. We had it grilled, and it was delicious grilled. Now we're having it smoked. So those big AJs, they go a long way. So we've made fish dip, let's say like three or four times now. And this one is the best fish dip we've ever had. The red peppers really add a nice touch, and the jalapenos, it's like just the right amount of heat. Good job, Rick. This is my favorite fish dip, too. It may have something to do with the extra vegetables that Brooke put in it. It, it really it really adds to it, the flavor, and, the, and, it, and it's interesting and tastes good. Jen? I think it's killer. It's super good. Fish? Yeah, this fish dip was uh, real colorful and real good. Definitely the best one I've ever had. I think it's really good too. Like Fisher said, it's very pretty, nice and moist, really good. Guys, I gotta say, this was the best fish dip I've, I think I've ever had. We've made fish dip probably four times now and Brooke did a very good job. I don't know if it had to do with the fish dip that we made or the amberjack. That was our first time making amberjack and I think it was a lot better than kingfish that we've done in the past. Yeah. Now this video was my fourth video from our epic trip down to the Keys with Captain Cody. You guys asked me a lot of questions about charter captains. So if you're looking for a captain, definitely check him out. He is one of the best. Again, if you guys haven't seen the rest of the videos, I will have them linked down below and I will also have Captain Cody's information also linked in the description. As always, thank you guys so much for watching and I will see you in the next video.